Hello, my friends. Wow, what have we got here, eh? One of my favorites. Uh, 150, 158cc Briggs and Stratton classic engine. The reason why they call it a classic, or this is this group of engines, is the carburetor is above the tank. Um, this is a Murray frame, and I'm really, really starting to respect the Murray frames. They're so well made. Just It's just that out here in Western Canada, we don't see as many of them as you guys do in the States or other parts of Canada. Great mowers. But right now, this one's not so great. It doesn't start. So I'll just, I'll just pull the rope for you because that's what we have to do. I could do that all day and it won't start. So naturally, the first thing I did was I put a couple of tablespoons of gas into the carburetor, which I will show you. And I don't have to pull the rope again because I've done, I did some troubleshooting while the owner was here. So I poured a couple of teaspoons of gas down there. I even tilted the mower back so it would drink it. And it uh, never fired. Not, not, then I thought it might be flooded, so I pulled it another f ten times. And it still didn't fire. So now you're up to me. You're up to speed. So the next thing is the uh, spark. So just for a quick check, because these uh, induction induction spark testers aren't a hundred percent foolproof, but I did this. I'll just turn that so you can see it. And there's no spark. So the next I check the spark plug. This is just lawnmower 101, right? You guys, you know, anybody who's repaired lawnmowers knows this. And if you haven't repaired, repaired lawnmowers, this is why I'm going through the first few steps with you so you know what to do. Plug! And this has an E3 plug, which are okay. I'll probably put a NGK or a Champion 19LM in here. Okay, so I took this. Let's have a look. I'm going to take a measurement of this spark plug. First, we're going to go end to end. Yeah, don't touch the ground. You have to go to the actual electrode part. Seventeen ohms, five point eight ohms. So it looks good. I'm going to make sure it's not leaking to ground. Let's be more precise here. It's open. Not super thrilled with it. So now I'm going to just tr try and see if we have a different, I'm going to try a different plug just for fun. I'm going to just try this J19LM and it'll be, should have zero ohms for the length of it. I've got to use a file. One point eight ohms. That's a good plug. So I'm just going to stick it in here. 
past the bale. And I'm just going to see if there's a spark to ground. Oh, there is a spark to ground. Well, isn't that interesting? So maybe this plug was no good. Well, it should start. Let's just throw this J19LM in there. So they put that spark plug on there, eh? It probably will fire now. Okay, I think it's still. I still think it's the coil. It's it's running really poorly. Uh, so I am going to change the coil. What's the blade look like? Actually, it doesn't look too bad. Needs to be cleaned out though. Okay, are we up all the way here? That'll do. Let's just take the hood off now and get going here. Can you see? No, see that's... I have to look back at the camera just to see what I'm doing. Okay, quarter inch on the... on the... Right there. I don't like reaching across a mower because you can burn yourself. That's okay. And then the front. And we take this off. And there's our coil. Now I'm going to blow the fluff out of there. And just to undo the bolts for that. They'll be quarter inch. Sometimes they're five sixteenths. wire here and that should just pull off. I'm going to measure this coil with an ohmmeter but with the modern ohmmeter with the uh, modern coils the modern coils it's almost you can't really tell from measuring it with an ohmmeter because the uh, the points what replaces the points are inside here. So I'm going to go from ground to here. Well it is jumping all over the place. Let's go to the short side. Okay, 0.8 ohms, that's good. So that's the bad one. Still got the spark plug in it. Let's check one of these, if it's the same type. Yep, it looks like it. Yeah, we'll measure this one. This one did have an in intermittent reading on the front end, eh? So we'll do that right now. Ground. 8K. Yep, it's a bad coil. And then we go from ground to the off on coil which should be six. So that's a good coil. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. I 
I'm not one of these guys that goes crazy on how clean they are, but it doesn't hurt. Get a little rust off. <coughs> Good. And our two coil screws with the measuring device. And let's pop it off. <coughs> All right, I don't know if you guys saw that. I just did a good spark check with the drill. Excuse me. Right to ground there. We got a great spark. So I'm going to use a J19LM because we have a 5000 ohm resistor in the hood. Now, one other thing that the customer did, I'm going to switch. Hold on, don't get dizzy. They put a new spring on the uh, governor, but it's put in backwards. The long piece is here, and you'll see the short piece is interfering with this arm right here. So I'll just move that around, and we'll come back. All right, guys. I'm just going to move this spring 180 degrees. I'm not sure if this is the exact spring for this job or not. But now it's not interfering with the throttle. I should be able to start this up. It should start. It's not the safest thing to do, but it's fun. Give it a squirt. got a surge, eh? Did you hear it? I'm sure you did. So I guess I have to clean the carburetor. I'm almost tempted to just try one more thing to see if our problem is still electrical. You guys still watch it? Yes. I'm going to start this up with the drill again, but I've added the Neon spark detector in circuit with it. So just to make sure, I connected this off the coil straight to the plug without the uh, 90 degree adapter which is a 5,000 ohm connector. Oops, like that. Oop, like that. So we got a problem with the carburetor. So let me get my, uh, <laughs> let me get my act together here and I'll come back. We'll just clean that classic carburetor or put in a new diaphragm, hard to say. All right, my friends, now we're gonna just take off this carburetor. Three eighths on this one. And I think that one looks like a half an inch. Depending on the year, they can be different, right? <laughs> so 
So it's running, but not good. And I, I checked two different plugs, two different ones of these. I put a, I put a uh, spark detector on to make sure the spark was consistent, and I'm sure it is now. So now we're just going to unplug this. We can see how bad the gas is. No joke intended. Good. You need a tray. Something to hold the bad fuel. Just give her a good mix, eh? Oh, the spring went flying. It looks okay. Are you with me on this? Let's put it in here. We'll take these five screws off. I haven't done one of these in a while. It's pretty gooey, eh? One. Oh, we'll just pull it right off with all of the screws in it. How's that sound? Got to go around again because I just loosened them. Yes, there is some schmoo right on the bottom of that. So we'll clean that. Get a little bit of gas here, not too much. I'll just clean the top of this a little bit. Okay, let's give it a spray. Looks like it's been cleaned relatively recently. That works too. Okay, I'm just going to take this out onto the alley and blow it off. Oh, we're good? You guys are still watching this? Sorry about that. Okay, now we're going to put the new diaphragm on. This is a original Briggs & Stratton diaphragm. Uh, I don't have the... No oh yeah. 79506. 795083 right there the diaphragm and the gasket together I cleaned the carburetor I shot carb spray through the whole thing and then I rinsed it with fuel the spring is still on that's very important I'm going to start it with a, a screw just to go through both. I don't, want to, I don't want to stretch anything, right? Good. And another screw on the other end. We'll start two. This should work. I don't know. I. The way it was missing, it didn't sound like fuel to me, but fuel these days you don't know anymore. Okay, we got all five screws in. I'll just tighten this up. One. I'll do it twice. Kind of in a star and a cross pattern, but not quite, right? Because there's five.
four, five. Back to the start. I'll just go around, make sure I don't lose any of them or miss any of them. And that's pretty much a diaphragm on a Briggs Classic. Lid. Tank's clean. I'm just going to pop it back on exactly the same way you saw it come off. Okay, so here we are. Just ready to go back on. This goes on to there. Make sure you've still got your spacer that goes behind the uh, half inch bolt. And we can tighten that up. And now the spring with the long side down at the, at the throttle. Let's just try one more time. Good. And the short side on the, on the uh, idle set. And that should be it. Let's connect up our 5000 ohm converter. And that's okay because we have a zero ohm plug. And let's get a little bit of gasoline in there. And we hope we've got something happening, eh? Half a tank. That'll do. That's more than a half a tank. They actually calibrate these at a half a tank, I was told. Squirt the... Good. Spark plug's connected. Our off wire is connected. So let's just put the uh, clamp on the bale. I'm going to break all safety rules and start it with a drill. Okay. I'll just give it a couple of turns. Okay, you guys, I've been I've taken this idea from Wayne from uh, EP Performance, another Canadian channel. Great guy. He says, uh, just, where am I here? Oh, 716. What happens? Oh, here's the hat. The three bolts, four bolts are around the exhaust port. Sometimes they can be tightened up a little bit. I'll do them all. Can't hurt. It's an old. It's oh, it's old, eh? So now I'm just going to put it back together. Shouldn't have many parts laying around. I'm looking for the uh, 
screw for the air filter. But anyway, I'm just going to put the top on and screw it down and we'll test it again. Okay, my friends. This cute little Murray is on its way home. And uh, she runs good. And then uh, I had to nudge the customer because I asked her when the oil changed. She said the oil has just been changed. And she, I asked her when it was just been changed. And she said about a year and a half or two years ago. So I just changed the oil and get, did a quick wipe on the blade with my grinder. And uh, now she's ready to go. I really like these old Briggs and Stratton classics. I want them to stay around. Yes, they have the diaphragm. But when you look at a Honda with the uh, clogging off main jet and emulsion tube, these are just as trouble free. And for nine, ten dollars, you get the diaphragm and it pops on with five screws. It's pretty simple. So, anyway, thanks a lot, and I'll let you go. I just thought I'd give you an update on this one.